Yes, it's John uh, G. Sutton. Tales uh, from the Jails. Don't forget to get my book. It's on Amazon. HMP Manchester Prison Officer. You'll like it. I did. I wrote it. That's me, by the way. Anyway, I'm going to talk today about uh, deaths overseas. You know, British nationals overseas are getting locked up. And uh, some will be in Qatar, believe me. It's going to happen. And so then see how the Home Office responds, eh? And FIFA. Yeah, seriously. But there's been a recent uh, inquest in East London about the death of a, a British citizen in a Dubai jail. Uh, his name's Lee Hall. Or it was Lee Hall. Age 39. And uh, he was starved, beaten, kicked, punched, attacked and generally abused at the Burr Dubai police station and jail in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. The East London coroner, whose name is Nadia Poussard, uh, she had great, she expressed great concerns about the way that British nationals are treated uh, in prison and uh, uh, apparently it transpired that uh, what had happened was uh, he'd had a, a kind of a nervous breakdown or a, a, an incident whilst he was uh, staying at the Burg Al Arab Hotel in Dubai and that one of the staff there had reported him to the police as behaving in an aggressive manner, and that he was arrested and taken to the police station, never came out. He was only there five days, and uh, apparently the he was attacked by other inmates, he was beaten by the staff, and generally abused, and died in the prison five days later. And the inquest uh, was in East London, as I said, the coroner was Nadia Persaud, and uh, great concern over people going to Dubai and United Arab Emirates. Apparently the number of complaints about being abused whilst in the UAE uh, has risen by 14% in the last 12 months. Of course, if you are going overseas and you want that ultimate experience, why not try Saudi Arabia? I mean, they... Um, have a slightly different way of doing things they are not going to kick you to death starve you or hit you beat you and attack you no they've got far it, it's kind of less complicated they cut your head off you know they have a big sword and uh, they've done 17 in the last seven days in Saudi Arabia 17 I mean well welcome to the medieval world, eh? Dubai, Saudi Arabia. Chop your head off, starve you and beat you to death in the jails. Which do you want? Um, mm, I say, what, well, I'm not going. That's what I want. Hey, listen, I'm not being facetious here. But if you happen to find yourself in Afghanistan, the Taliban have really got it going now. They've switched the, the clock back 600 years. We're now at the year 1200 and they've just been passing a new law that people who do not comply with their Sharia law, which is, is now in force, they're going to be punished by flogging. Apparently, the, it's a strange number, it's 39 lashes of the whip in public. They did about 250 people the other week. I mean, it's, it's for strange things like failing to wear a, a hijab or failing to comply with the Sharia reg, uh, regulations. You've got to hand it to them. I mean, H.G. Um, Wells couldn't invent a time machine. The Taliban have done it. They've taken us back in time 600 years. So basically, this little rant today is to tell you, basically, stay away from the Dubai jails. Listen, I had a client in Dubai. Seriously, this is a, 
Uh, she was a airline uh, she worked for an airline she was a hostess I believe she was the senior hostess you know and uh, she had lived in lived in Dubai and uh, one of her friends came to visit her in her apartment there and was taken ill and uh, uh, stomach problems she was taken ill and this lady put her in a car and drove her to the hospital where she was taken into the hospital and admitted as an emergency. The problem was that the lady that drove her to the hospital had one glass of wine in her house, in her flat, before she set off to drive her friend, who was taken ill, to the hospital. And she phoned me and she said, what do you think I'm going to get? I said, well, I, I hate to tell you this, but I think uh, you're, going to, you're going to come unstuck here. She got a month a month in prison for one glass of wine and she had to do something a friend was drastically ill I don't know if it was an ulcer or whatever it was but if she hadn't got her into hospital a friend would have died that didn't count as anything she was imprisoned and uh, held in quite drastic conditions I believe in Dubai anyway she survived but uh, it, it's very dangerous so be very cautious about this and uh, we've yet to see what's going to happen in Qatar. I mean, we've just seen Japan beat Germany. And that's the second time they've tried it, but the first time they've won, yeah? We beat them the first time, didn't we? Yeah? Japan had a go, like, but... Anyway, here we are now, and it's now time for a poem. Yes, I'm not going to do the singing. I've been criticised. Somebody said that, that was the worst effort I ever made yesterday. What was it? Um, what kind of fool am I? I thought I did a good job, didn't you? What kind of fool am I? Anyway, I'm going to read you a poem now by one of my favourite poets, Sir John Betjeman. <coughs> they asked the song dinger just in case you want to escape before we get to the poem. But this is a rather nice poem. It's Middlesex by John Benjamin. Gaily into rice lip gardens runs the red electric train, with a thousand tars and pardons daintily alights Elaine, hurries down the concrete station with a frown of concentration, out into the outskirts edges where a few surviving hedges keep alive our lost Elysium, rural Middlesex again. Well cut Winsmore flapping lightly, Jack Ma scarf of mauve and green, hiding hair which Friday nightly delicately drowns in dream, fair Elaine the bobby soxer, fresh complexioned with inoxer, Gains the garden, father's hobby, hangs her Winsmore in the lobby, settles down to sandwich supper and the television screen. Gentle Brent, I used to know you, wandering Wembley wards at will. Now what change your waters show you, in the meadowlands you fill. Recollect the elm tree misty and the foot Paths climbing twisty under cedar shaded palings, low laburnum leaned on railings out of Norfolk on and upward to the heights of Harrow Hill. Parish of enormous hayfields, Perivale stood all alone, and from Greenford's scent of Mayfields most enticingly was blown. Over market gardens, tidy taverns for the bona fide, cockney singers, cockney shooters, merry poshies, looping pooters, long in Kensal Green and Highgate, silent under soot and stone. That was John Betjeman's Middlesex. 
as you heard in the poem, he uses certain phrases and certain place names, Perivale being a place, a Winsmore being a make of a, a coat, a Jack Ma scarf being a, a scarf. And when he says that Friday nightly the hair delicately drowns in Dreen, Dreen was a shampoo very popular in the 1950s. You used to be able to purchase it at... Uh, 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 little corner shops in plastic little packets that was specifically for one wash, yeah? Uh, gentle Brent, of course, we've got Brent, and we're talking about the Wembley Wards and the heights of Harrow Hill. Kendall Green is, of course, a uh, uh, and Highgate are cemeteries, silent under soot and stone. That was Middlesex by... John Betjeman. Don't forget to get my book, folks. This is Tales from the Jails. John G. Sutton. <laughs> 